So uh, this is, I think this is a return of the Nerf, yes, the, the right. Learning Arduino series, but it's not really because no. like, you haven't really had much time to, no, no. to invest. No, no, spin-off series. Yeah, so this is a bit of a spin-off series, um, and I'm going to be teaching Tim how to design a circuit, uh, specifically a MOSFET circuit, um, design it fully, and we'll send it off to the manufacturers to make the PCB, and the next episode... Uh, we'll be building it and testing it and chucking it into a Nerf Blaster. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Let's get into it. All right. All right, so Tim, um, actually you've got a Nerf Blaster, don't you? Did you bring your Nerf Blaster along? No. Oh, you didn't? Okay. The issue with the Nerf Blaster, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is that it's a fairly high current motor dc brushes yeah yeah motor, so all it? the modern stuff so the high performance motors you put in yeah. they draw way more current than the stuff you get off the shelf yeah, yeah yeah so the first thing you need to do when you're designing the board is first you've got the functionality right so you want yeah. to be able to replace the, the switch yeah. which is a low current device with something that can handle the current yes so we need to first look on the web and see what sort of motors are in Nerf blasters or one you want to actually put in yep um, and see what sort of current specs are so, so just go um, to the website that I get my motors from usually blaster. yeah yeah sure <laughs> it's, it's like a Nerf specialty store yep um, they sell a whole bunch of motors mm -hmm. I've got a couple of these at home so this one here I bought a few I haven't really used them properly yet yep. the reason why you go big motors because they've got more torque and because they've got more torque they usually um, have a lot of current one of the measures we use in the hobby is this figure here store current I mean that's if you have a jam and the motors are being stuck still yeah, yeah. and you're holding the button down that's what's going through the wires and it'll start warming up everything or burning out stuff any in, in a given game you're not going to be drawing 40 amps regularly it's that's just right. it's just a safety margin peak mm. that people plan for so people plan for batteries and lipos to be, be able to meet that current demand yeah. Um, or people wire according to those demands, right, so that's right. what we use as a guiding tool. Yeah. Alright, so we need to look for a MOSFET yep. that can handle 40 amps. Uh, well, when you, um, depends on the design because yep. you have two of these motors spinning yep. at the same time. Yep. Do you have one MOSFET per motor or can you... It's MOSFET? probably, I mean, you're talking 12 volts of 40 amps. It's a fair amount of dissipation that the package actually has to be able to cope with. Yeah. So I would actually veer on having two. Yep. Uh, because, you know, they're relatively cheap. Uh, MOSFETs, you can probably pick them up from one to three dollars all right comma one so um so if we go to digikey and we can probably look up uh mosfet just type in mosfet only forty-seven thousand to look through i hope you got some <laughs> yeah all right so we can, we can certainly narrow this down the most important thing first off is to look at the part status yeah if you pick a part that's discontinued it's not so good right yeah yeah um so if you scroll down so the quantity of availables probably the key element that yeah. you're looking at. In your case, you probably only want to make 20 or 30 of them initially. Yeah, that's but right. But la later on, you might want to make a whole lot of them. So the quantity and also the price mm -hmm. is probably the key elements. Of course, you know, you've got to have it within spec. So um, we'll click on active. Uh, so 29,000 remaining, I must cut it like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got a lot of stuff that is not going to be useful to yeah. people. Okay. Um, now, because we're controlling a motor, you'll need an N-channel FET type. The FET is actually put on the, um, the trailing end of the motor. So you've got the power supply, the motor, and then the FET, which is essentially drawing it to ground. Yeah, okay. I won't go into the details of MOSFETs, but it's similar to a transistor mm -hmm. or a BJT. A transistor is a current controlling device, mm -hmm. whereas a MOSFET is a voltage controlling device. It builds up a field which allows a current to flow um, from drain to source. In a nutshell, um, yep. I think I'll probably have another video on I MOSFETs. think so. I, think, I, I know, think I need to have a video. I can never truly get my head around. It's one of those things. <laughs> but, it just um, works. There's several key elements you need to look at. The drain to source breakdown voltage and the gate to source um, max voltage so the voltage gate source in your circumstance what's it uh, you're talking about 12 volts aren't you yeah so the, the motors are designed for 12 volts but yeah. in the hobby we power them with lipo that particular motor if i go back to that website or show yep. you it says here 3s I means it's designed for a 3s lipo right and nominally that's 11.1 .1 volts mm -hmm. but fully charged it's like like 12 or something some people actually do run them on 4s which might be 14 yeah, okay, volts. so it's 14.4 volts Not is the max. Um, and we do the old engineering thing, which is doubling it. So say so we're looking for something that's 30 volts yeah, okay. max. Because a fully charged 14.4 <coughs> volt battery is going to be like 15 or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's right. 
So um, the difference between a drain and a gate voltage in this case, we're not talking about switching using a lower voltage to switch a higher voltage. That's right. Higher voltage. I mean, one day I hope to use an Arduino, but just for now we'll do the simple thing where we're going to yeah. use the That's same right. battery. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the most important thing is the, the breakdown voltage. Is it breakdown, isn't it, when the thing starts to break? As in yeah. The MOSFET yeah. starts to crumble? Down, yeah. Okay. So VDSS uh, is 30, 30, 30 volts. Let's do min, uh -huh. 30 volts. So we've got a number of components here. Uh, we can pick the cheaper ones. Yeah. I have actually done a little bit of preparation here. Good, good. Um, and so to avoid us spending hours going through all the different types, and one thing I did see um, is that a lot of people tend to be using this one. All right, so this is one that a lot of Nerf models tend to use. It's got a 40 volt breakdown yep. voltage and it handles 195 amps. That's a lot of <laughs> Right, so perfect. Yeah, 195 amps. So we've got our package, and look, we've got 6,000, and you can order one. Yes. Um, all right, so the next thing is, because you're driving a motor, you know motors are also generators. The speed of DC motors. Yeah, when you let go, the motor's still spinning. Correct. And then it's like turned into an electricity generator. That's right, so yeah. electricity going back up the wires. That's right. So you've got to be able to avoid that affecting anything else. Mm -hmm. That's called a flyback diode. When you uh, remove power to the motor, it'll start producing power. Yeah. And oh, so, and the diode just dissipates the current? Yeah, or? it'll just dissipate it back. It won't really theoretically charge your batteries up. But essentially, you're pushing voltage back into the LiPos for a very short it's amount of time. Um, I prefer to charge it the normal way. <laughs> yeah. But uh, generally, you put a big diode uh, just before the MOSFET okay. as, as a supply. Now, this is a plated through hole device. Yeah. Um, you can get surface mount devices, but they're a little bit tricky. Plated through hole devices, this TO220 package uh, is very common. So oh, have, hang on. Oh, that tells you what <coughs> it physically looks yeah, like. Yeah. Right. Um, most of the um, schematic capture tools that you use, um, I have plenty of those. So you can choose to have surface mount if you want to. Doesn't really matter. I never tried surface mounting much. soldering before, so no, I'm no, happy with three hole soldering yeah, at the yeah. moment. We've got the MOSFET, we've got the diode. Oh, actually, do we have the diode? No, we don't have no, the diode. No, you said flyback. Right. So a lot of people tend to be using a diode called 1N5400. Oh, see, quantity available, zero. Mouser has plenty of them. If we look at the data sheet, this is the Fairchild one, which is obsolete. Um, so you can see a lot of manufacturers make these. It's a common standard type of... Yeah, yeah, it's very, very Specification common. or something, yeah. Certain components are just used everywhere. Yeah. Uh, like 1N4148s, they're very common for low voltage stuff. 1N5400 series is, is another one. And the only difference between a 5400 and 5408 is a reverse voltage. Mm. We don't need to handle a kilovolt. So this specs, you've got the repetitive reverse voltage of 50 volts. We've got 30 volts max. If you put 50 volts, then this diode will start to break down. Yep, and then it yep. might stop doing its job. Uh, it may or may not. Like catch fire? <laughs> Uh, you know, that's, it, that's for another video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good I've outside. got plenty of fire videos. <laughs> so this is a peak repetitive, and then you have non-repetitive. So it can handle 100 volts, with short spikes. Mm -hmm. But engineering-wise, you want to be able to get to half that mm -hmm. volley. So we've got you know 30 volts already. Mm -hmm. 50 volts is fine. The other thing is you've got 200 amps non-repetitive peak surge. You've only got 40 yep. amps per so, motor. Yeah. yeah, per motor. So that's fine. They could potentially drive both motors from this yep. one thing. All right. So. We've got our voltages, we know the, the motor specs, we've got our diode, we've got the MOSFET. Remember we were talking about pull up pull up and pull down yeah. on GPIOs? Yeah, it's not that floating problem. Yeah, floating yeah. Problem. so MOSFET has the same sort of issue. An end type, you've got to pull it down to ground mm -hmm. um, and then you pull it high to do the job. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I won't go into how to calculate it, but 2K pull down resistor is probably good. Okay. Right, uh, we've got two diodes potentially. Yep. Um, we've got the MOSFET, we've got a resistor. Mm -hmm. Easy board to make. Yep. So... Um, For you, maybe, yeah. Ah, uh, you. <laughs> so this video was originally only going to be a couple of videos, but when I got to post it, I discovered there was actually a lot more content. So in the upcoming videos, Tim will be taking a look at entering the very simple circuit into Easy EDA, then designing that PCB, and then sending it off to JLC PCB for manufacture. So I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.